Hi, everyone. Hello, hello. Good morning if you're in the States. Good day, good evening if you're elsewhere in the world. Uh, we're super excited to have a new demo here today with a new beginner series. Uh, my name is Mary and I am your host here with At Your Studio. Um, I have the wonderful Zara, Sarah Van Dogen here uh, who will be demonstrating uh, today uh, for about half an hour. Uh, we're super excited to see her work her magic today. So if you have any questions for Sarah regarding her process or her art or anything about the beginner series um, that she will be teaching um, in the next few months, uh, please share so in the comments or in the live chat, excuse me, um, and uh, we'll ask them to her. Um, if they're not immediately relevant, I will save them for the uh, Q&A at the very end. Um, and uh, that way we have uh, time for Sarah to uh, not get interrupted and she can just go straight into her process um, and have, we'll have her talk as much as possible. Um, Tammy, if you're getting a bad echo and you might have multiple windows up, try refreshing your page because um, uh, audio over here is is okay, at least on my end. But uh, feel free to let me know in the chat if you're having other video or audio issues and I'll try and help you out there. Um, okay, so we do have a reference photo for today. Um, it is in the link in this video description, but I do have a direct link that I will post in the chat um, if you're not able to find it. Uh, we don't expect you to follow along. However, you're more than welcome to give it a shot after this demonstration is over. Um, and feel free to share it online on Instagram or in our Facebook group uh, so that Sarah can take a look and maybe she'll have time to give you some feedback uh, based off of her demonstration today. Okay, other links will be shared in the chat. They're also in the video description. Um, but I want to go ahead and have Sarah start. So Sarah, let's go ahead and bring it on over to you. Uh, tell us what we're doing here today. Um, yes, so uh, thank you. We're going to paint um, an illustration with mixed media. So I have the reference picture of a lovely lady with a dog and um, I'm going to make an illustration out of that. Okay, great. So here's the link in the chat. Um, it is a really fun picture of a little lady with a poodle dog. Um, so pull that out and maybe have it on hand in case you guys want to give the illustration a shot later today. Um, Sarah, I'm going to go ahead and bring your camera up so that you can, so that we can see your sketchbook better. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Can I start? <laughs> go ahead. Yes. Okay. Cool. Uh, nervous. <laughs> No worries. It's just me and my voice and everybody watching here today. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what are we doing here? You you got a marker and you're looking at the um, reference photo, I'm assuming. Yeah. Yeah. So I printed it out uh, very tiny by accident. Um, <laughs> so I'm I'm looking. I mean, I can put the reference picture over here. Yeah, so, that's great. Um, I'm looking at it and I have this uh, sort of uh, beige red marker and I'm just putting in sort of the outlines, the most important things. And um, I'm using this marker because if you paint over it, you don't really see it anymore. So that's why I use it. Is this like a, a pinkish brownish marker? I can't. Yeah, it's um, yeah. it's beige red, and it's uh, mm -hmm. actually a, a watercolor marker, so it might fade a little bit um, when you put paint over it. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. A uh, question in the chat, what brand of marker is it? It's uh, Faber-Castell and it's an Albrecht Dürer watercolor marker. So it has two tips, a, a big one and a small one. <laughs> and they have um, they're very nice colors. So um, I really like them. Mm -hmm. 
I like that they're watercolor, so uh, they're not quite so permanent yet. They can still react with water if you go on top with water. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And also they don't um, bleed through the page. Mm. So that's, um, that's always something I look for because I don't remember what I painted on the other side. And then if I use a marker, I ruin my other work. Um, so, okay, I'm happy with this. So now I'm gonna go in with paint. And I have this uh, paint box and they are um, uh, Holbein acrylic gouache. Uh, get some water. So is this a mixed color or is this straight out of the two? Um, this is sort of, I mix it a little bit. So mm -hmm. you can see it's this and it's um, light apricots mixed a little bit with the coral red, which is next to it uh, to make it a little bit warmer. Mm -hmm. And I also um, use a little bit of water. Is it thin, this layer of color you're putting in? Yeah, so the, um, the face is quite thin, but on the poodle I'm using thicker paint. I'm not really sure, but I, I usually um, um, water the paint down when I uh, paint the face, because normally I would maybe also sketch the face first, and then I wanna see that sketch through the paint layer, but I um, I didn't bother with that now. Also because she's wearing these sunglasses, so her face isn't um, that visible. Yeah. Poodle has quite a long neck. <laughs> <Oops>. <laughs> I like that you went with like a deep bluish color for, for the poodle. Yeah, it's darker on the camera though. So uh, oh. it's, um, oh, I don't have the color here. Let me see. It's uh, ash blue mm -hmm. mixed with the white. So. Also the picture she's wearing you know, these cream colored <clears throat> uh, clothes. So they're a little bit boring. So I'm gonna change that up. <laughs> wow, you went for bright colors. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and um, I can always tone it down. Um, Mm. later at a later stage with like crayons on top or and I often mix the colors on the drawing itself so if I think oh this is too bright I will just grab a bit of of white and go over it again When you choose um, like to change change up her clothes, for example, and you're going with bright colors, is it very intuitive how you decide on a color? You just on the fly, this color um, looks great. <laughs> yeah, I sort of, I often tend to use the same, the same colors. Um, mm -hmm. So 
um, it's sort of intuitive, I guess. And I mean, there are also um, sort of rules that I follow. Mm. Um, so I don't know how to explain, but I want there to be some warm colors and some cool colors and some lighter colors and some darker colors. Mm -hmm. um, and I keep forgetting. So I just started using acrylic gouache and I keep forgetting that they dry up darker than they actually are. So I usually have to give it another layer of a lighter mm. paint later on. The rules that you follow when you choose colors, is it like, um, are they more like color theory rules? Like you're thinking about harmony and values, that kind of stuff? Um, yes, a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. And also um, about the colors that are sitting next to each other. So, um, right. And, and the balance in, for example, she has gray hair. And I usually paint that like bluish. So mm -hmm. it's a nice um, balance to give her skirt the same color as her hair. Right. Um, so like that. And for example, when I paint myself, I have red hair. So I rather not give myself like a red or, um, or dark pink shirt because then that's too similar to the hair color. So there's mm -hmm. there there are rules like this, but I I mean rules are also there to break. So mm -hmm. it's not a strict rule. All right, so some activity in the chat here. Uh, hello, everybody. Again, if you were just joining us, uh, we are doing a quick demo here of uh, Sarah's illustration techniques. Uh, reference photo is linked there in the video description as well as earlier in the chat. If you have any questions for Sarah regarding um, anything about her process or if you have questions about the beginner series that she will be teaching this coming month, uh, please feel free to ask them in the chat here. Oh, Valerie, hello. Great question. Um, so Sarah, why use a marker and not a pencil? Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, why? <laughs> Is that a question? Yeah, yeah. They asked why, why, did, why start with a marker for your sketch and not a pencil? Um, well, sometimes when you use a pencil, you can really get lost in drawing. And um, I don't want to spend too much time on the drawing part because that's not what I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes the like if it's a graphite pencil, the gray can mix a little bit with the paint. Um, and also with a marker, you can't erase it. So it's um, yeah, it's a little bit scary, but that's also fun. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I. Yeah, I think I, yeah, I do it because it's uh, less. Um, the marker is less visible at the end. I guess. And using a marker is like it kind of forces you to kind of commit to and you can't erase. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and you're not. Um, it's also quite a, quite a chunky marker, so I'm not getting lost in any details. I'm just gonna, I just want to um, put in the biggest shapes. Uh, yeah.
Yeah, it kind of looks like you're putting in um, a background, uh, the bed, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm not really, I mean, I think it's a little bit weird that she's sitting on a bed. So I'm not, <laughs> I don't think I'm going to make it a bed. Uh, or maybe I will, I don't know. <laughs> But yeah, she has to sit on, she's sitting, so she has to sit on something. Right. Otherwise she's floating. Um, there's a question here in the chat. Are your color choices all intuitive at the moment? I know we kind of talked about this, but. Um, um, yeah, well, um, they are, but I did really choose the colors I bought. Like, so I already know that they go well together. Mm -hmm. um, so they're intuitive, but also very calculated. <laughs> I don't know how to explain. I mean, a lot of a lot of people ask me about color because it's it's quite difficult um yeah to make to make a balanced yeah a color palette while still using a lot of different colors um yeah um this is this needs to dry a little bit but i can show maybe my uh, a full sketchbook right now is that okay yeah that's totally fine yeah let's go ahead and okay, do that I'm so put yep. a lid on that We'll let that sit and dry for a bit. And uh, when Sarah is showing here are just examples of her work in her sketchbook. Um, I posted the link in the chat a few times already now, but she will be teaching a beginner series starting next week on the 27th. Um, or is it two weeks from now? I, I can't math right now. <laughs> it's probably two uh, weeks from now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, two weeks, yeah. I'm, uh, oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, no. yeah. Um, <laughs> So this is my sketchbook from April and I'm I'm not really sure what's in here. So there are also very sketchy things and maybe also some um, meetings. This was my birthday um, uh, that are confidential. So maybe I need to flick quickly through something. So um, yeah, what we will cover in the in the beginner series, the mixed media illustration is is drawing because that's very important. So you we will use uh, one lesson only graphite pencil, mm -hmm. um, and drawing from observation. How important that is. This is a live drawing session with marker. We will also use markers. Oh, I love these drawings. Yeah, oh, dogs. I'm so bad at drawing dogs. I have to um, <laughs> crack, crack this <laughs> Um And we will, um, I will also uh, talk about, there's one uh, lesson about mixed media. So combining different medium paints, colored pencils, markers. These are acrylic markers, uh, crayons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's also um, a session on patterning, I think, uh, a yeah. quick session on doing patterns. Yep. Yeah, and uh, and portraits uh, that's included in the pattern one, I think. Because also, I really believe um, that practice is, is the way to, to get better. Um, so this is one, this is uh, July. And we will also, uh, so the final lesson will be sort of painting a scene uh, with a character, preferably. Wow, look at these portraits. Um, 
Yeah. So uh, if, everyone, if you if you can take a look at the Etcher Studio website link I posted there, uh, it is a, a bundle of five sessions. Um, as Sarah was saying, uh, you'll go through fundamental drawing uh, techniques that uh, Sarah thinks is really important, um, as well as a mixed media session on how to combine uh, different mediums into one drawing and painting effectively. Um, you can kind of see here in her sketchbook, you know, there's a lot of uh, different materials that she uses and she mixes and matches them in different ways, um, you know, and then of course you will have exercises and uh, learning how to do faces and figures and patterns and then how to put it all together in a scene um, in an environment uh, with the whole goal of helping you feel comfortable being able to paint and draw basically anything in your world, um, anything that you see in the world around you, uh, recording it and documenting it in your sketchbook, things like that. Um, I think it'll be a really great illustration series, introduction to illustration anyway. Um, and Sarah, you're so prolific. This is like your third sketchbook here that you pulled out. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, I usually fill um, two or three sketchbooks each month. Mm. Um, but I mean, there are also like, these are like 30 second sketches. So yeah. I'm not really precious with my sketchbooks. So um i don't spend a lot of time on one on one thing um because i get i get bored quite easily so a lot of things are also not finished maybe bit of a shame very lovely uh so we got a couple questions here um since if we still need to give your other uh painting some time to dry, uh, would you be able to answer mm -hmm. a few, Sarah? Yeah, sure. All right, great. Um, okay, let's start with this one from Valerie. Uh, do you recommend to always start the painting with the main character? Uh, yes, because um, I when you start with um, not the main character, well, I have that, I had that, then sometimes that one it doesn't fit on the page you know if you start with a minor detail somewhere um your main character might not fit because you get lost so yeah i always start with the main thing and i sketch that one out and here i sketch the table i see and the windows but that's it then i go in with paint and all the details i do last so i'm not sure where the details will go or what the pattern mm. will be or so i will decide that later and then i see ah oh, she's wearing a blue sweater and i need a little bit more blue so i will make this one blue and this little table um yeah so i don't decide everything before i start basically but i always start with the main focus of the drawing yeah mm -hmm. beautiful great that's a really great tip, you know, kind of start where you know will be the star of the show and then kind of go from there. Um, everything supports yeah. that star. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with live drawing so often, I really wanted to focus on faces, but I did that last and then the face wouldn't even fit on the page. <laughs> That's such a shame. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, another question here about your color palette. Is it usually limited to just a few colors? Um, I think so, yeah. But that's also mm -hmm. sort of natural. Um, and also it's, yeah, it's the colors that I'm comfortable with, but um, I've started um, using purple, for example, for the first time in my life a few months Ooh. ago. So I'm very slowly, <laughs> well, it's not even real purple. It's like a lavender blue. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, and it takes me months to, to learn, really learn about how to use that color and use it with my, with my other colors. So actually using a limited color palette is easier and then slowly adding in more colors. Mm. Uh, and that wor works really well for me. Okay, so sort of parts of this are dry. So I'm going in for the details. 
Um, Is that a, a type of color pencil, uh, like an oil color pencil, or it's what is it? um, luminance pencil by Carandash, and this is mm -hmm. the color uh, sepia. So I I want to use a dark color for the for the feet the features, but I don't want to use black because I think that's too too harsh. Mm -hmm. um, and I also have this one, this is Payne's gray. So that's sort of very dark grayish blue. But for the face, I think that's that's too cold of a color. Um, so I found that the, the sepia, which brownish color is perfect. All right, everybody. So just a quick time check. Uh, we're about 26-ish minutes into our demo. So we'll have uh, Sarah oh work God. maybe for about, yeah, another 10 minutes or so. Um, and that way we can have her uh, try and complete this. So I know you have a few other questions that we haven't gotten to here yet in the chat. So I'm saving them for the end. Uh, that way Sarah can uh, work on um, finishing this uh, this illustration here. I mean, I think I can, unless there are also related questions to the, um, I think I can uh, also answer okay. questions. All right, sure. Yeah, I'll pull one that was a little bit from earlier. Um, how do you digitize your illustrations? Do you use a scanner? Uh, yeah, I have a scanner, quite a, a cheap one. It's a Canon scanner. Mm -hmm. um, and I scan it in and then I um, use Photoshop to uh, correct like the colors and stuff and maybe some smudges uh, to delete those, but I do minimal um, corrections actually. So um, the scanner is able to capture your paintings and the vibrant colors quite easily? Uh, well, this, a scanner always changes the color. So, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, this paper is off white, but even if you use white paper, you will still see sort of the paper. So, um, I often remove the background and make the brightness go higher. So make it brighter. And so, yeah, I, I, there are a few things that I often always change. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. All right, cool. And then we have a question about the whole blind gouache. Um, mm -hmm. So if uh, because it's acrylic, um, I, w I imagine it gets dry on the palette, right? Yeah. And yeah, I don't in your experience, have you been able to reconstitute or rewet it? Or is it just um, not reusable? <laughs> It's not reusable. And that actually really uh, makes me very nervous. So I have this palette with a lid that sort of really is airtight. So this stays mm. wet, um, wet for like a week. And I put like, I have this little spray bottle and I put water on top. Um, yeah, yeah, I still am figuring out how, <laughs> how to uh, get the most out of out of the acrylic but i really i really like it because you can layer things up bef without them smudging into each other um and the colors are more vibrant i think mm -hmm. uh, but they are quite expensive um so i only buy the colors I like because I know you can also buy them in sets, but then there are often so many bright colors, for example, that I will I will never use. So I don't really use orange colors or like very bright yellow or 
I sort of already know what colors I like. And then if I want to try a new color, for example, I bought this one, lilac. You know, I just buy one tube without buying a whole, a whole set. Mm -hmm. All right, great. So um, there's a couple more, but I kind of want to go back to your painting here uh, real quick. So your musing looks like crayons and color pencils kind of interchangeably. Can you talk about how you go back and forth between those? Yeah, so these are Neo Color 2 crayons by Karen Dash. So they are water soluble, although I never really use the water soluble part. Um, I do find that with the acrylic gouache, it's more difficult to go over it with um, colored pencils. So mm. actually, I also think that's why I use a lighter layer of paint, like more water on the face, because then the color pencils work well. And I want mm -hmm. to use the color pencil here because um, with the crayons, you can't go very detailed. So, um, and her, her face is quite small over here. So I don't wanna uh, make her features too big. Uh, so actually for the rest of the drawing, I use uh, crayons. I, I just barely noticed that you didn't put the sunglasses on her face. <laughs> yeah, I, maybe I will still do that. Oh, okay. I mean, I, I like it either way because it's, <laughs> it's just a different mood without the glasses. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's weird to wear, I think it's weird to wear sunglasses indoors <laughs> when you're in your bedroom. I don't know. <laughs> um, before you were trying the acrylic gouache, Sarah, were you using just regular gouache before? Uh, yes, then, yeah. Yeah. Mm. And I still, I mean, I still use it sometimes. Um, because that's also something I noticed that apparently I find very important that I can take my materials with me and with the, the acrylic gouache, it's just so much harder to take everything with you. <clears throat> and with the, the normal gouache, I have this paint box and, you know, I can just reignite, like reuse everything. So that's so much easier. You just need water right. and a brush. Mm. So I'm not, yeah, I'm still figuring out how to, to take the acrylic wash on the go. Mm -hmm. um, in the beginner series, will you be doing both gouache and acrylic wash in your instruction? Um, or? No, I'm going to focus one or the other. on, yeah, acrylic gouache. Also, okay. I don't want uh, people to buy that many materials you know yeah and that's mm -hmm. it's already quite a lot actually um but i think if you can use the acrylic gouache the normal gouache it's it, yeah it won't be a problem i think it's it's more difficult the other way around if you if you uh start using the normal gouache and then go to acrylic well i'm, I'm not sure but i mean you can do the course with with either one. Okay, great. Yeah, so for those of you just watching now or just joining us now, um, Sarah is uh, doing a beginner series introduction to illustration with mixed media techniques. Um, so uh, I posted the link here a few times, but I'll post it here so that you all can check, take a look at the five sessions that she will be teaching and it will culminate into a masterclass at the end of the series. Um, so as you can see what she's doing here, she's using a, a variety of different materials. Uh, there will be a focus on acrylic gouache, like Sarah said, but if you have regular gouache, you can still use that because I think the effects will be similar. Yeah, and um, so I will also use the crayons like I'm using now, but in the series, I will also use uh, watercolor markers and acrylic markers. Yeah. Cool, great. 
All right, so um, it looks like you're doing some patterning and some kind of highlights and stuff now. Do you plan to do anything yeah. else with the environment or are you just kind of finishing no. up the figure? Yeah, I'm finishing up, yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. it's sort of done, I guess. Awesome, this is great, Sarah, this is so lovely. And it's just amazing how you use all these different materials and it's all coming together so beautifully. Um, oh, thanks. <laughs> all right, so in that case then, uh, let's go ahead and answer the last few questions that we have here and then we'll um, call it a day. Um, yeah. Let's see, I know there was one earlier, second. Um, so because you have so many sketchbooks, you said you fill like two or three a month. Um, do you have mm -hmm. a storage system or how do you file or store your sketchbooks over time? Um, I just have the recent one. So till uh, January 2020, I have them on a shelf in my studio. And the rest I put in a box and uh, put them at my mom's house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so I mean, I, yeah, I, I don't really have a good system, but yeah, you need a whole a whole room, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So mom, mom keeps it safe for now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Um, yeah. So uh, I think. For, to answer that question, uh, whatever storage or organization system works for you to store all your sketchbooks and books, um, that would probably be the best bet. Um, and then here, let me look and see if there's any other questions. Uh, there was a question about mixing the right colors if they have a basic 11 color set and what paper is best to use for practice, in your opinion? Um, so, well, um you buy obviously the primary colors so if you want to be able to mix almost every color you need uh i think magenta karma mm -hmm. like there there is an obvious set so it's two two of each two blues two reds two yellows and white um I think they sell they sell that, but there are like I never use magenta. I don't really like like magenta, but it's personal, right? It, it, mm -hmm. The same with if you you might love purple, so that might be your your star color. So it's not you don't need to use the colors that I'm using. Um, and paper, yeah, there are many different kinds of paper. If you use mixed media, then I would really advise you to use a uh, very smooth paper because if you use colored pencils or crayons and the color is like watercolor paper or, the or it has a big texture, then you really see that. Um, so this is um, hot pressed. This is an etcher sketchbook. It's hot pressed, which means it's smooth. So then you don't really see the the paper texture that much so you see it a little bit but with with watercolor paper that would really come through mm -hmm. and um yeah it's really what you what you like this paper is quite thick i'm not really sure how much like uh, the etchers, yeah it's about 200 gsm for the regular etcher sketchbook mm -hmm. yeah yeah and but like this sketchbook is uh, Royal Talents one. This is like 120 or 100. So this is very, very thin actually, but I like it. So it's, it's very personal. And I noticed that I make different work on heavier paper. It's more controlled, more finished. And on like sketchier paper, yeah, I make more or thinner paper. I make more experiments, more sketches. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah. Okay, great. Um, so let me just try and grab a couple more questions and then we'll end our demo for today. Um, when you paint outside, I guess when you go travel or when you're painting on plein air, you notice, you said earlier that gouache was easier for you than taking the acrylic gouache. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, what, um, 
you know, do you do you just stick with gouache? You, you've never taken acrylic gouache with you outside, right? I'm trying to understand this question here that I have. Um, yeah, no, I haven't taken it out yet. Okay. Um, I mean, I've taken it on like holiday, but then that's still sort of inside for me. So I haven't taken it out to go sketching like in a cafe or mm -hmm. something. Right. Okay, and then I think that's all the questions we have. So, um, oh, I missed this one from Cleopatra. I'm sorry, I keep missing your questions. Uh, the regular gouache that you use, uh, what brand do you use since you can re-wet it? Um, it's uh, Royal Talents. I mean, there are many different brands uh, out there. Um, mm -hmm. So this is originally a Dutch brand. And it's not that expensive, but the quality is quite good. So you have also very expensive, uh, like small tubes or like very cheap ones. But it's I think it's best to start somewhere in the middle. Um, but I mean, Winter and Newton and Derwent, and they all also do gouache. And gouache is always water soluble on set, on, unless it says that it's acrylic gouache, which is sort of a new a new thing. Great, and I think those are all the questions. Um, so yes, and for everybody who uh, are watching the recording later, um, please feel free to chime in in the comments of this video, uh, how excited you are. Let us know um, if illustration is something that you've always been interested in learning. Let us know in the comments below uh, what kind of illustration you're most interested in doing. Um, and then for everybody else, who's uh, joining us here live. Uh, thank you so much for your questions and thank you so much for your enthusiasm. Uh, links are all in the chat and the video description. Um, and yes, uh, to answer the common question here, if you just have regular gouache, that's totally okay. Sarah can still uh, teach you and you will all get a lot of value from doing uh, just gouache. However, if you do want to try acrylic gouache, um, just take a few colors, just the primaries and maybe a tube of white, like like uh, Sarah said, you don't want to go too crazy with all the colors here. <laughs> um, and yeah, a survey link is also in the chat here. Please go ahead and fill that out if you have an extra minute or two. Um, it just lets me and Sarah know what we're doing okay, what we can do to improve. If you just want to give us some kudos and compliments, we definitely appreciate that as well. Um, and yes, if you decided to give this reference photo a crack, please do so and share it in our Facebook group. Link is also in the chat. Um, or if you'd rather use Instagram, I'm sure if you tag both Etcher and Sarah, we would love to see it. Uh, Sarah may be able to have some time to give you some feedback as well. Um, and I think that's it. So hopefully we see you all at the beginner series. Um, Sarah, is there anything else you'd like to say before we end off today? Um, no, I don't, uh, I don't think so. I had a, a lovely time, so I hope you did too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, her Instagram is Sarah Van Dogen Illustrations. Follow for more beautiful artwork. I know there was a question about more artwork. Go to her Insta and you'll see all the artwork that is uh, great for your soul there. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Um, okay, everybody. So we'll uh, enjoy your Friday. Enjoy your weekend. Sarah, thank you so much. Um, and we'll see everybody at the beginner series. Bye, everyone. Bye.